boaters and anglers, you're sitting there, you're saying to yourself, is that Sea Keeper one worth it? I mean, a lot of money to really work. But we're out in the ocean today, and you're gonna see and hear about the pros and the cons of the Sea Keeper one. So let's take a look at the unit itself. The boat that I'm on is a Steigercraft 28 model. All right, so it's 28 long, it's got a 10 foot beam, and it's got a 2021 Sea Keeper 1. Now, this was the first unit that they came out with that has 12 volt capability, and so you don't need a generator to have this unit on your boat. So let's take a look at it right now. Now, originally, what you're looking at, this was our fish box. And in order to make this fit inside of here, we had to get a new lid to open up the uh, floor. So one of my additional costs that I had was the fabrication of this lid. When you are thinking about a Sea Keeper 1, you gotta ask yourself, well, where do I want it to go? Now in our case, in any boat's case, you want it to have, to be in the back half. It doesn't have to be centered. Ideally it's centered. And so in this case, this made the most sense. But as you can imagine, because I put it here, I did lose that fish box. So that's a consideration to keep in mind with your boat have a bit cooler but that cooler takes space on the cockpit so you just want to remember that as well now i want to show you where the batteries are next because the space is the biggest drawback that you have to consider to this oh and one last thing this weighs a few hundred pounds right and so by putting this in the stern area just got to keep in mind you're adding a few hundred pounds to the stern. That might affect somewhat the way your boat rides. Just keep it in mind, keep it in mind. Okay, so now we're in the helm area and I wanna show you, this is where we essentially had a, a second fish box. Now we, we still have it as storage, but can't really use it as a fish box now because you have the two batteries for the Sea Keeper here, as well as the battery charger for these two batteries, okay? And so, depending on, on, on your boat and your situation, it may require one or two, sometimes three batteries. I've seen different, I've heard different. But the main point, again, I want you to think about here is, all right, so I've, I've now lost some space in my helm storage fish box, which really wasn't a great fish box anyway, because it's in the helm area. I don't, I don't want to use it, didn't want to use it for that, but we lost some storage. We lost the fish box in the back. So now that we've covered really what you might call the drawbacks or the thing you need to be aware of, let's look at the performance, because that's what's so stinking awesome about this. It makes it a game changer and really an equalizer when it comes to a small boat like this, being in a big ocean, bigger waves, big boats, I mean, what it allows you to do is absolutely stunning. It's unbelievable. So let's look at that now. Okay, so now I'm at the helm. I've got my Sea Keeper screen up. First thing you'll notice is you got your roll angle that it shows you. Now, the roll angle currently with it on, and this is a beam C right now. So I put it so that the the waves are coming 
at the side of the boat so as to have the greatest impact potentially on roll, okay? And so currently, you'll notice our roll angle is right around one to two, maybe three to four is, is, is as much as it gets. And this would be considered, if you're looking at the waves outside, they would call this probably two to four foot waves is what, what it would be. It is what it's saying on the, uh, on the forecast today, all right? So you got two to four footers. But our roll is minimum. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the activation of the Sea Keeper. Because the way Sea Keeper works is it's spinning up to 9,700 times a minute inside of that little globe that you saw, all right? So in this case, as soon as I hit this button, it'll deactivate it from doing its thing. So now it's off. And once it comes off, we're gonna start to notice that it will now have more of a roll to the boat. See how we just hit a nine angle? Now we just hit nine again. So the boat, even though it's still spinning, now the boat, the boat is having a significant amount of roll. Again, got the beam C against us, you notice it more. Now, what, what's the drawback to that? Well, the drawback is if you're in the cockpit fighting a fish, especially, or trying to move around or walk around, when you get a significant roll, you have a greater chance of falling or injury. Plus, it's just harder on the body as a whole. So when you have a sea keeper, it prevents that from happening and it definitively pre prevents that from happening. So you can see we're really moving all over the place. So I'm going to go back to engaging it. And see, we've been all over the place. It's six there. And so now I've engaged it and quickly it's going to draw back in and it's going to stop that movement that we were getting. Now you might say that degrees only is a few degrees. You know, you went from max three or four to suddenly, you know, you were getting up to nine or 10. That's a lot and it makes a difference. We have this little 28 foot boat and we will see sport fishing boats go by us, rocking back and forth. And we're sitting there and just absolutely fine with the beam C any day of the week. Now, real quick, I want to show you too, there's two settings that you can have on your Sea Keeper 1. And I've played with them both. A lot of people don't play with it. So what I want to show you is currently here, you'll see this is your motor speed or, or how fast it's spinning. All right, that's how fast it's spinning. This is what's left in the battery. Now, because the battery is constantly being charged, it's going to stay up. I can set it so that it can go to 7,000 RPMs or 9,700 RPMs. In other words, it's rotation per minute. So you might say to yourself, why would I want it? Or why would they even have that setting there? Well, that burns less electricity on your batteries or it, it sucks less from your batteries. And so the benefit potentially of that is, let's say that you were anchored up and your engines weren't on, you were like chumming for Kobe or something like that. And you wanted to benefit from a Sea Keeper, but you wanted it to last as long as you could and your engines weren't able from the alternators to keep the batteries of the Sea Keeper charged up. And so you'll get a third more battery life, roughly, and I've tested this, if you have it at that 7,000 versus 9,700 RPMs, all right? Um, some of you are wondering about cost on this. All in, this was about $25,000 installed. That included the labor. I'm sure it could be different for you wherever you get it installed at. I had it installed at Chesapeake Boat Basin in Kilmarnock, Virginia, but um, that seems to be the rough going rate. So when you see the prices, how they have it set at 15, 16,000, whatever Seakeeper has it set at, keep in mind that does not include installation or any other 
uh, modifications they'd have to make. So hopefully that gives you a great sense as to the Sea Keeper one. You know now its benefits. You know its potential drawbacks. You know its cost. And I can only tell you that it's one of the best investments I've ever made. And I'll say it again, in many ways, it's the great equalizer because it allows a smaller boat to fish in a more difficult condition. Now, just keep in mind too, it doesn't help you on the front chop if you get beat up from, from the bow, but it certainly is gonna benefit you on that side to side roll. And that is my review of the Sea Keeper One. Thank you.